looking for some movies that you might not have heard of that are zombies, found footage, or just weird metaphorical films? Well, we got a few here for you this week, so let's get into it. What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond the Void. My name is Alex, and today we're going to be doing another of my weekly watch list. That's right. Everything that I watched, I try to keep it to about five films that I want to talk about and bring to your attention to see if something you might want to watch or you might have overlooked, and they can range from new to old. It really doesn't matter. But this week, it's a pretty big grab bag style of stuff that you might want to check out for yourself. Will be a little bit for everybody, really. As always, we'll include all the links to any of the physical media that you want to check out down below. If it's available, I'll put links to it. And if it's not physical media, I'll just tell you where to watch it. Now, this week started off a little bit late, but I got it started with an older film that's from the collection that I got from like last year and I've been trying to play catch up with. Part of the reason why I do this is to watch stuff that I've been missing. So first up, we have Shockwaves, which is an older film from 1977 that I have seen, but I don't remember much about it. It's about a group of visitors who are on a boat. They end up having boat issues in the middle of the water and at night when they hit a ship that is apparently a ghost ship, end up finding an island nearby to escape to before their boat sinks. And they find its home to a reclusive Nazi commandant who has been breeding a group of super soldiers from corpses, not so nice dead, Nazi soldiers that uh, are out to kill everyone who can withstand time, water, and just about everything you throw at it except sunlight. Now, this one really surprised me because it's by director Ken Wiederhorn, who did Return of the Living Dead 2, and he also did Dark Tower. Didn't really love this film, but something that really kind of boosted the film and the sort of atmosphere that goes with it is the score by Richard Einhorn, who really paints it with a really creepy, haunting, late 70s synth sound that I absolutely fucking love. It has like these weird resonant sounds that kind of go all over the place. Feels very dreamlike and it just kind of works for this kind of film. But I love the music and the zombies that come up out of the water was like kind of like a really cool touch to add to zombies because normally with zombies it's not as localized to a specific group but these are super soldiers that have stood the test of time who have basically lived on a ship and crashed out in the middle of the ocean and they start popping up out of the water and it looks really cool in a lot of these scenes nothing extremely gory this is a pg film but i highly urge you to check it out if you've never seen it and you are a zombie fan because it's something a little bit different for you that you may have never seen before. And I honestly kind of like it. So I give it about a six, maybe a 6.5 out of 10. Nothing that's gonna be super groundbreaking, but super different and unique to itself. And it's kind of dispatching its inhabitants on the island one at a time. So it's kind of a fun watch. If you wanna give Shockwaves a chance, you can check it out on Prime Video for your subscription for the service and also on Tubi with that. Up next, it's part three in a long series of found footage films called Horror in the High Desert. And this one just came out this year and it's called Horror in the High Desert Firewatch. Now, if you've ever seen the original one, and it, it, it's basically like a documentary style found footage film where they basically do a lot of heavy investigation sort of documentary style work in the beginning of the movie. And then you get to see a lot of the footage by the end of the movie. These are pretty popular amongst the found footage community. And uh, I did like the first one, even if it does get a little hokey at the end. I actually used the first movie and told my girlfriend that it was a real live, you know, documentary. It was based on something real. And, and it scared the crap out of her. So I've kind of enjoyed watching each of these for the channel here. Part one, I really enjoyed the most. The second was kind of okay. It has some flaws, but I still enjoyed it. And then this one is kind of carrying on from the first two. So if you know the story about the lost guy in the first one and the lost woman in the second one, or 
a crew that was lost in the second one looking for the first guy. This one kind of wraps it up together. So it's going back to the guy in the first movie. And there's this guy named Oscar Mendoza who is kind of following the footsteps of the guy from the first film, journeys into the area to find this lost cabin, going to all these different places that, you know, these, these movies have taken place to really kind of track down Gary Hinge. And it's hard to explain, but you know, the documentaries, you could literally tell your friends to watch these and be like, these are real life. It's by director Dutch Marich. Had pretty good success with these films. And this one deviates a little bit from the lore to do something a little bit new and different, a little bit more supernatural, if you will, which I applaud, I think is a good thing. I think it's just slightly better than the second one, but only by just that little bit of lore. Otherwise, it kind of feels very similar to the second one. I do like that lore shift though, and I think it's a good maybe step moving forward if they're going to continue on with sequels it just felt like this one lost a lot of the tension that i got from the first two like this one but i'm not a like fan fan of it i would still maybe rewatch it if i went down the franchise i'd give this one like a 5.5 or a 6 out of 10 probably a 6 out of 10 because it is competent the way they do the documentary is really good and it does give you a vibe now this one you're gonna have to rent it's only for 4.99 on hd or $3.99 on SD. You could probably do either and just be fine. But yeah, it's on all your digital platforms. Up next, we got Rorschach, which is a 2015 film that was put directly to YouTube. And this was actually a suggestion by one of my viewers named O with a umlaut sort of thing over the O. Suggested it because I had suggested watching another found footage movie recently that I saw called its name was Mormo, which I found to be pretty enthralling and kind of an analog approach to a found footage, like the classic style found footage films. I personally think they're so different. So because they're both uh, attacking a different style, its name was Mormo was essentially trying to be a very classic hands-off approach to Hey, here's the files, you watch them. This one is more of following two investigators who go to a person's house and document some sort of supernatural event that's occurring in this woman's house and her child. There is a doll that's involved in this, this house that they find when they first moved in and all kinds of weird, crazy, creepy things start happening in the house. And it does seem fairly credible as far as the acting goes although it is a little bit of like leading you on a carrot on a string and kind of pulling you the way that it needs to go rather than you just sort of discovering it by watching it but there are some spooky moments in the film and i think it's worth a watch i'm a little iffy on this one i didn't like it as much as its name was mormo but it is a different taste and a different type of found footage you know this is investigator one where they get into words and talk a lot the other one is more of like like I said, an analog hands-off approach. This one I would say is about 5.5 or six out of 10. I'm sorry I didn't like it as much as you did. Oh, I know we're all gonna vary from time to time on different movies. Maybe this one just affected you when you first saw it. I still enjoyed it and I think it might be worth a watch if you wanna find something new to watch. This was by director C.A. Smith and this is their first feature film, which I have to say, damn good job for a first feature film. The acting is not as believable, but it is decent enough to get through and enjoy the movie. Like I said, you can watch this on YouTube, so if you want, check it out there. Up next for my weekly watch list, we have Life Changer. Now this is a movie that I just kind of bumped into because when I go on IMDb, I will watch a movie, figure out all the stuff about it, learn about the people who were in it, you know, then do some investigation. And I'll often go down to the section that says, if you like this movie, well, you might like these. I like weird films that kind of go and do different stuff as an indie film and kind of really do something different than a lot of the mainstream stuff. And this is a really good indie film that does some pretty different things basically dealing with a body snatcher somebody who can change bodies by using and taking the body of somebody else the story on this is pretty wild although it is kind of a mixed bag of genres in here that you may or may not expect like john dies at the end or you know like there's just a lot of crazy 
weird trippy imagery and stuff going on and i kind of felt like that was what this movie was going to be when i saw the trailer it's much different than that and it's actually pretty surprisingly good this is about a murderous shapeshifter who sets out on a blood-soaked mission to make things right with the woman he loves so yeah in a way it's a kind of a messed up love story but only because the woman doesn't know who he is he has visited her many times in different bodies in the past and so you kind of follow this guy as he's like taking over people's bodies for different people and also trying to reclaim the love that he thinks he has with this woman an interesting tale about all these different people and it, there is a lot of dialogue in it but it's really decent dialogue the soundtrack in this is actually pretty good i wouldn't really necessarily call it a love story but it's an interesting angle to learn about someone who is st essentially stalking and killing people to find the love of his life. So if there's a category of messed up love stories, well, this might be one of them. I definitely like the score in this. They do a really creepy, synthy, melodic, and also sometimes very sincere music. But they also have like some weird music from Dog Fashion Disco, El Creepo, and Polka Dot Cadaver. I used to listen to Dog Fashion Disco which is like Mr. Bungle, so you can imagine. It's also a Christmas movie too, so if you're looking for a just not so Christmas, Christmas movie, well, here you go. But yeah, I would give this one probably a 6.5, maybe even a seven. I really like the ending of this one, and it really surprised me with the metaphor that it has in this. I applaud it for being different and doing something that kept my attention the entire movie. If you wanna watch it, you can check it out on Tubi, Vudu, Prime, or even Shudder and AMC Plus, so it's everywhere. And last but not least, I picked the 2024 film, which I'm probably gonna be doing a lot of 2024 films before the end of the year top, you know, 20 or so films. But for now, this one is I Saw the TV Glow, and it is a movie that was an A24 film that A24 was kind of pushing in the very beginning. It got a lot of attention. And this movie in particular, I don't know if it's necessarily horror, but it has like a weird mix of like nostalgia in it. And in fact, this movie is a very heavy nostalgia film about someone's childhood and it feels very incredibly personal to the person who made it. This is by director Jane Schoenbrunn, who was the director of we're all going to the World's Fair, which was kind of like a creepy pasta movie that they do some really atmospheric, weird stuff in about this girl going online to the internet and finding solace in some weird fair that's supposed to pop up and is kind of taboo. This is another one of their films, and so it perfectly makes sense about this one. This one's about a teenager just trying to make it through life in the suburbs and is introduced by a classmate to a mysterious late night TV show called The Pink Opaque, which is about these two girls who are psychically connected over vast spanses of land and are fighting sort of like these supernatural characters uh, that are sent to them by this weird kind of monstrous moon thing done in the style of like almost like goosebumps in a way but like it's been inspired by so many different things you know like it's a tv show that's made for tweens and this kid Kind of meets this other girl who's like obsessed with this show and sort of finds out his identity of who he is through the process of doing this kind of attaching his identity to things that aren't him like the tv show it's like essentially about finding one's identity themselves their personality who they are what we all want to be it has themes of lgbtqia plus and it is very friendly to that but in no way is it taking away from anybody else that might want to watch this film it's very inclusive in the sense that it is actually talking about anybody who has grown up and felt awkward i mean i think most kids have a point in their life where they feel like they're just not included or at least many of us do i mean really masterfully done it, it's not done in any kind of pushy way that you know people tend to complain about for some dumb reason i grew up feeling a little awkward and not really fitting into anywhere and you know i felt very alone in my own world and i sought a lot of like solace in the television and this movie is really kind of using that as like a what if you were addicted to a show 
as your identity instead of learning about yourself. Exploring that and seeing how far it goes, putting the characters through the ringer, and it's really trippy, very visually colorful, and the music is really beautiful. They even hired people to do songs for the movie that like sing about the stuff that's in the movie which is really great and i don't know the the bands in it but the, i do kind of know some of the names like drab majesty did music for it yule amongst many others and it's very ethereal and dreamlike i think it's a really good movie is it a hundred percent for me and what i watch it a lot of times probably not but i think it's definitely worth a watch to see where it lands for you i would give this like a 7.5 or even an 8 out of 10 you know with a caveat of you know this isn't gonna be for everybody it's very slow the characters are very awkward and intentionally done so because these are kids that don't fit in they're not gonna fit into your world necessarily until it does and then you connect with that moment in your childhood maybe so it's gonna be a very specific proud niche audience if you don't like metaphorical deep movies that get a little too full of itself may seem that way anyway even though i don't think so it's going to be heavy on that and it does have heavy musical tropes so it kind of feels like a music video you can watch this now on max or rent it for 5.99 on any of your regular places digitally online but yeah that's everything for my week's watch list and I uh, hope you got some stuff in it that you might want to check out for yourself. Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like, share button, sub, everything. Do everything you can to get this video out to your friends because it really helps me to reach more wonderful people like yourself. But thanks for coming by and we'll see you for next week's watch list. And as always, long live the void.